Hey family welcome to Deep Universe Updates please subscribe the channel and press the bell icon for ore updates. The Archipelago of Wonders, an introduction, the Philippines, a string of emerald islands, scattered across the vast blue of the Pacific Ocean. More than 7,000 islands, each a world of its own. Some are large, bustling with life and modern cities. Others are tiny, untouched, whispering secrets of ancient times. These islands are not just land and water. They are a stage for human history. A place where incredible stories have unfolded. Stories that are only now beginning to be understood. Stories that could change how we see our past. And perhaps even our future. The Philippines is a land of incredible diversity. Geographically it is a marvel. From volcanic peaks that pierce the clouds to deep ocean trenches. From sprawling rice terraces carved into mountainsides to vibrant coral reefs teeming with life. Each island has its own unique character, its own distinct ecosystem. This variety has shaped the life that evolved here. It has also shaped the cultures that took root. Imagine the sheer range of environments, from the cool highlands of Luzon to the sun-drenched shores of Palawan. This diversity is a source of strength. It is also a source of wonder. Culturally, the Philippines is a vibrant mosaic. Over a hundred ethnic groups call these islands home, each with its own language, its own traditions its own unique way of seeing the world. Austronesian voyagers arrived thousands of years ago. They were followed by traders from China, India, and Arabia. Then came the Spanish colonizers and later the Americans. Each wave of arrivals brought new influences, new ideas, new genes. The Philippines, a land of ancient wonders, also faces modern complexities. Territorial disputes cast long shadows over its sparkling waters. These are not abstract political games. They affect the lives of ordinary people. Fishermen who depend on the sea for their livelihood. Communities that have lived on these islands for generations. The West Philippine Sea for example is a focal point of such tensions. Claims and counterclaims create an atmosphere of uncertainty. This uncertainty can hinder cooperation. It can make it harder to address shared challenges like protecting marine environments or managing resources sustainably for future generations. These conflicts are a stark reminder. A reminder that even as we uncover deep history, present-day struggles continue, the implications are significant. Access to rich fishing grounds is at stake. Potential undersea resources like oil and gas add another layer of complexity. Imagine a time long before written records. A time when early humans, our distant ancestors, first set foot on the Philippine Islands. What evidence do we have of their presence? For many years the story was thought to begin relatively recently, but shocking discoveries have pushed back the timeline, dramatically. In Kalinga province in northern Luzon, researchers found something astounding. Stone tools. Not just any tools. These were tools used to butcher a rhinoceros. This might not sound earth-shattering at first but the context is everything. These tools were found alongside the rhino's fossilized bones. The bones themselves showed clear cut marks. Marks made by hominins, our ancient relatives. The truly shocking part? The age. These remains were dated to around 709,000 years ago. 709,000 years. This discovery, published in 2018, sent ripples through the scientific community. It meant that early humans were in the Philippines far earlier than anyone had dared to imagine. It challenged existing theories about hominin migration patterns across Southeast Asia. How did they get there? Were they capable of crossing open water even then? These questions opened up exciting new avenues of research. These were not sophisticated tools. They were simple flake tools. But they tell a powerful story. Meet Homo Luzonensis, a new cousin in our family tree. The story of ancient humans in the Philippines gets even more intriguing. In Calao Cave, another remarkable discovery was made. Scientists unearthed small teeth and bones. Bones from at least three individuals. Were they Homo sapiens or something else? They belong to a previously unknown species named Homo luzonensis, announced in 2019. They lived between 50,000 and 67,000 years ago, contemporaries of Homo sapiens and other archaic humans. The human family tree gained a new branch, evolved in isolation on an island in Southeast Asia. What did they look like? The bones are few, they had a mix of ancient and modern features. Their teeth were small, but their finger and toe bones were curved. Nature's unexpected solution, the metal absorbing plant. The Philippines is not just revealing secrets about our ancient past, it is also offering potential solutions for our future. And some of these solutions come from the most unexpected places. From the unique biodiversity of the islands, scientists have discovered a remarkable plant, a plant with an unusual appetite. 
It doesn't just absorb nutrients from the soil, it absorbs heavy metals, large quantities of them. This plant, Rhinorrhea nickelifera, is a type of shrub. It can accumulate up to 18,000 parts per million of nickel in its leaves, without being poisoned. This is an extraordinary ability. Most plants cannot tolerate high levels of heavy metals. Nickel, in particular, is toxic to them. But Rhinorrhea nickelifera has evolved a way to thrive in soils rich in this metal. Soils that are often found in areas with ultramafic rocks. These rocks are common in certain parts of the Philippines. The plant acts like a natural vacuum cleaner, sucking up the nickel from the ground and storing it safely in its tissues. Whispers carved in stone, the Angano petroglyphs. Long before the first Spanish galleons reached Philippine shores, people were leaving their mark, not with grand monuments of stone and mortar, but with art. Art etched directly onto rock surfaces. The Angano petroglyphs, located in Rizal province, are a testament to this ancient creativity. These are the oldest known artworks in the Philippines, a sprawling gallery of 127 figures, carved into the wall of a rock shelter. Figures of humans, figures of animals, stylized and enigmatic. What do they mean? These carvings are believed to date back to the Neolithic period, perhaps as early as 3000 BC. Imagine people, thousands of years ago, carefully chipping away at the rock, creating these images. Why did they do it? Were they recording important events? Were they part of a ritual? Were they trying to communicate with spirits or perhaps simply expressing their view of the world around them? The precise meaning is lost to time, but their power remains. They connect us directly to the minds of people who lived in a very different world. The site itself is significant. A shallow rock shelter, offering protection from the elements. It might have been a sacred place. A place for ceremonies, a place for healing. The Laguna Copper Plate. A glimpse into early society. For a long time it was widely believed that the Philippines had no written records before the arrival of the Spanish in the 16th century. History it seemed began with colonization. But a discovery in 1989 shattered this assumption. A thin sheet of copper, found by a man dredging sand from the Lumbang River in Laguna Province. This was no ordinary piece of metal, it was covered in intricate writing. This became known as the Laguna Copper Plate Inscription and it turned out to be one of the most important historical artifacts ever found in the Philippines. The inscription is written in a script related to Old Kawi, a writing system used in Java, Indonesia. The language is a mixture of Old Malay, Old Javanese, Old Tagalog, and Sanskrit. This linguistic cocktail itself tells a story, a story of extensive connections, of trade and cultural exchange across Southeast Asia. Long before European ships dominated the seas, the copper plate is dated precisely, to the Saka year 822, which corresponds to April 21st, 900 AD in the Gregorian calendar. This makes it a pre-colonial legal document, a receipt, in essence. What does the inscription say? It is a declaration. It states that a man named Namwaran and his descendants are cleared of a debt. Limestone tombs and ancient rites, connecting with ancestors and our future. The story of the Philippines' ancient past is also found in how its people honored their dead. Across the islands, archaeologists have uncovered fascinating burial sites, sites that reveal complex beliefs about life, death, and the afterlife. In the Cabayan region of Bengay province, high in the mountains of Luzon, lie the Cabayan mummy caves. Here, ancient Ibaloy people practiced sophisticated mummification techniques, preserving their loved ones for centuries. These were not simple burials. They were elaborate rituals, reflecting a deep reverence for ancestors, and a belief in their continued presence among the living. The mummification process was intricate, it involved smoking the body over a fire, and internal cleansing. The mummies were then placed in fetal positions, and interred in natural caves or man-made rock shelters, often surrounded by personal belongings. These sites are sacred to the Ibaloy people today. They are a direct link to their ancestors, a tangible connection to their cultural heritage, the limestone tombs and burial jars found in places like Sagada, with its hanging coffins, or the Maitum anthropomorphic jars in Sarangani, further illustrate this diversity of ancient mortuary practices. Each tradition offers clues to the worldview of its creators. These discoveries are profoundly significant. They tell us that early Filipino societies had rich spiritual lives.